Next in line is this 2005 Ford F-150 pimped out edition. Customer complains the check engine lights on and intermittently it runs crabby. So first let's go into our generic functions. Um, well, let's start with the codes. So in the memory we have let's see here. So 171, 174, system two lean and ignition coil A primary secondary circuit fault. So if the lean condition is affecting the whole engine, you know, one ignition coil, one bad you know, misfire wouldn't really cause that. Um, Keith already looked at this previously and you know he confirmed that the ignition coil is bad, but this uh, lean condition, uh, he couldn't really get to the bottom of it uh, due to time constraints. So now I'm looking at it. Uh, so you're just basically starting from scratch. So first I want to look at the freeze frame data. So let's go to our generic functions. Freeze frame. <clears throat> okay, here we go. For the 171 Let's see here. So our RPMs were engine speed at 1300 RPM, closed loop, so it only has two oxygen sensors, and it looks like both of them were pegged out lean. And look at our fuel trim, it's 30% in both banks. Those long term and then short term are I guess at zero. I don't know why those aren't pegged out too. <clears throat> Let's keep looking at our pits here. Ambient temperature, so the engine was hot. The barrel is at sea level. We are exactly at sea level. We're actually right next to this huge bridge. And you can see ships over there. So pretty darn close to sea level. That looks good. Calculated load value is 52%. Even has a fuel pressure PID, so 38 PSI. And the fuel pressure, we come over here. Relative throttle position, like 20%. Airflow rate, grams per second, 22 grams per second. Okay, so there you have it, 34% absolute load value. So just on the throttle, accelerating. So let's, uh, let's get out of here and look at some data. So let's look at our O2 sensor data. So we have bank one, bank two, grams per second, our fuel trims, that's all we need. So let's start it up. Look at the long term fuel trim there, 30%. Short term's trying to correct. Twos. It's definitely a misfire. So our O2s are oscillating. Long term trim and short term trim. Let's put that up. Let's see what else we have here. Let's see, sensor 1 1, sensor 2 1. Sensor one, two.
So I'm going to get in the throttle a little bit here. Hmm. Huh, so it actually, in OEM data, it does look like it has four oxygen sensors. Look at our long terms. They're both pegged out at 30, and our short terms are, you know, around 10. So the lean condition is happening right now. I'm just going to load it up a little bit. See if it gets any worse. It does not seem to be changing. look at our mass airflow here. So idle, it's a 5.4 liter and we have four, about four grams per second. Hmm, I don't know if that's, that's a good number for this engine. Give it a snap throttle there. It did respond. Back down to like four grams per second. Okay. Mm-hmm. Let's see, save that. Now let's go take a look at our fuel pressure just for for reference here. Fuel rail pressure, PSI, it's at 40. I don't know if there's a desired, there's a desired PSI right there. The desired is 39 and it's holding pretty close to 39. There's even a fuel pump percent. Take a duty cycle, so nothing's wrong with our fuel system, it looks like. So this MAF at, at six, 0 0.6 volts is reading only 3.9 grams per second. I think that is low. Let's see if we get lucky in our component test meter and might tell us what the specification should be. Let's see, 5.4, fuel injection, mass airflow sensor right there. So it just says 0 0.5 to 4. We can try looking at that data pit with the key, you know, with the engine not running. Let's see, shut the engine off. Turn the key back on. So 0 0.01 grams per second is equivalent to huh, basically 0 volts. So start up again. So either we have a vacuum leak <laughs> or this mass airflow is reading too low. I guess we could uh, try the trick we did on the Subaru videos, pinching off some hoses. You know, that's that's a good thing to try. There's your problem, lady. K&N. What does Eric call these? Kendra and Natalie. <laughs> uh, 
Oh man, we got some performance goodies on here. Now let's see, is this our mass airflow right here? It sure looks like it, doesn't it? Hmm. Maybe we should unplug it and see how it runs, huh? Oh man. I know Keith said that some of these vacuum lines are also messed up. Like the, the purge wasn't going into the right location. Mass airflow reading changes here. Short term's pegged out now. Okay. Put that back in. Short term should come down. It's coming down. So our mass airflow went back up to 3.6 grams per second. System closed loop. I just want to unplug that mass airflow, huh? <laughs> nice. Let's see, if it, let's see if it starts without it. Boom, zero. Starts right up without the math. Cool. Let's see if it'll go back in a closed loop here. Or if it'll substitute a value for the mass airflow. Do 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 do. It isn't closed loop. Our fuel trims are still pegged out. Let's see here. Mass airflow is zero, zero. We still have a problem, huh? I have a huge, huge vacuum leak, perhaps. Although we didn't hear it. I wonder what it's basing its, its default strategy off of all right 
Alright, well, I think I narrowed down the problem. So, fuel terms right now, you know, long term is pegged out at 30, short term is around 10. Alright, so we come over here. This is the mass airflow. Let's do a little experiment. Well, I'll undo this clamp. I want to pop this pipe off. See if that makes any difference. The engine definitely uh, responded. Look at that. Look at our uh, short term right now. Dropping like a rock. And our long term is compensating for that too. So, aftermarket garbage, you know? See, our mass airflow reading went from like four grams per second up to what it, you know, approximately where it should be, about five and a half. It's bouncing around. But that's, you know, subtracting those two, we're at like 10% now, which shouldn't set the check engine light. So the only real fix for this is to get the OEM air box, air tube, mass airflow sensor. That's it, you know. You don't want to waste time with this uh, k and cold air intake. It might look cool, but you know these sensors are very, uh, very finicky. <sighs> that's that's the problem. Aftermarket junk. So remove it, put on the OEM stuff, and this truck should be fixed. All right, guys. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Just as a confirmation, I raised the RPMs a little bit. You see the memory is still there, but now we're down like perfect. Right there, let's see, 2%, we're at like 3%, so. Before, it was just pegged at all RPMs. So just the way the air flows over that sensor, the engineer is designed it one way and you you know put on something else and completely messes with the with the fuel trim maps. So that's it.